On my way to the running track for another round of testing. This time, obviously running, not cycling. It's currently only a few days after I did the testing on the bike. So that was Tuesday, it's now Friday. My legs are a bit tired, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how today goes, but basically got a 5K test on the card. It doesn't have to be max, but as close to max as I can kind of put up with. <laughs> um, so this is actually a repeat of something I did back in September and I pretty much ran 16 minutes dead. How did that feel? Oh, 1601, 1602. What I was aiming for, but it was a bit harder than what I wanted it to feel like. Um, yeah, it just felt super kind of tight around the breathing. Legs felt fine. Um, yeah, that happens. So it's a good benchmark to move from. Since then, I've done the biggest run block I've ever done, but I've not done any intensity. Like, none at all, let alone three minutes per K pace. I might not improve at all, but I think like any increase would be a positive because the work I've done doesn't really lend itself to a 5K. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting and really painful. <laughs> Warm-up's pretty much done. Done just over half an hour. Included a couple minutes around threshold, 45 seconds around 5k pace. And now just doing another 10 minutes. An easy jog to clear any lactate and then I'll crack on. Feeling, feeling all right. Not feeling amazing at effort pace, but like tempo felt good. So I've no idea what to expect really. Sun's coming out, so top might come off we'll see first 15 minutes i did in like in the middle on the grass on like everyday shoes and now i've got my speedy shoes on wasn't already painfully obvious that I'm new to this whole YouTube thing. I forgot to do my running debrief at the track, which is why I'm now on the bike. For anyone interested, I've got like a three and a half hour ride to do with two times 30 minutes at four watts per kilo in my race position, which for me is around zone three. So nothing too grippy, but after that run, like it, it's significant. Normally I avoid riding after running at all costs because usually my legs feel absolutely trash on the bike if I do that. But thankfully they don't feel too bad today. My heart rate is a good 10 beats higher than I'd kind of be used to, but that's not a bad thing. And I think if it was particularly suppressed, that would be more worrying. But anyway, back to the 5K. So I ran a 15.43 which is like a 308, 309 per kilometer pace. Not setting the world alight, but a 17 second improvement on the time I did back in September. And as I may have mentioned before, I did the run, that's off a block of no intensity. So I've maybe done like 20 minutes running at around 340 per kilometer pace in the last two months. But otherwise, all my running pretty much has been below four minutes per kilometer. So I think what that shows is, firstly, that you can improve your top end speed just by doing zone two, which is really encouraging. But also that, you know, what I've been focusing on in terms of building that aerobic base has dragged up the pace that I'll run a 5K at and hopefully a half marathon and a marathon as well. So that's the main coaching tip I have is that Zone two works, it's well publicized now, but it really does work and it, it will drag up your pace across every distance and is really worth focusing on. Now, the next point is more about my own time and my own feelings towards it. I'm really happy with that improvement. 1543 compared to probably most other elite triathletes is not that competitive. I would expect to get spanked, to be honest, if I was in a straight up 5K race, but I'm not training to run a fast 5K. I'm training to run well across a half marathon or a marathon off the bike in a triathlon. And where I think my talents lie is being able to operate quite close to my maximum pace even after a run. So for example, at the end of last year, I ran a 16 minute 5K and then did two middle distance triathlons. Neither of them were particularly flat run courses and I ran 114 dead for like both half marathons. Now, I reckon the shape I was in then, if I'd done a standalone half marathon, I would have come in 
in the late 113s. So I think what that shows is that I am able to produce a half marathon that's quite close to my max, whether I've ridden before or not. And Outlaw X, which was the British middle distance champs, in particular, I came off the bike absolutely wrecked and still managed to run that time. So I think really encouraging. I think going forward, my hopes for this year, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to break 113 off the bike. And honestly, I'm hopeful that I could even break 112. That will take a bit more work from where I currently am, but I think it's, I think it's doable. And if I were to do that in my first pro season, I would be really, really happy. If I were to run a 111 something off the bike, that would put me definitely at the pointy end of the pro triathlon run splits. Maybe not the sub 70 minutes that like a yellow gains can run, but I'd be really happy with the 111. So overall, pleased with that 5K. I think that's a positive change. And yeah, you will have seen some footage of me running. I'm gonna do a video critiquing my own run form because I think there are definitely things to say and things to analyze. And hopefully that will help some people. But if you have any thoughts initially on my run form and yeah, feel free to comment and slag me off for it. But as I said, I'm gonna critique it myself in another video. Hopefully that covers everything. And I guess the main point is I've run only zone two for two months and I took 17 seconds off my 5K time. So there you go. Run slow to run fast. Peace. Thank you.